Hi, I'm Jessica, and this is my Lego wool spinner. When you spin, you start with wool that's been carded. And this means that all of the wool fibers have been separated and laid parallel. It's very easy to pull this apart, but when you twist it, the fibers lock together and become quite strong. This twist is what the Lego wool spinner provides. There are two key pieces to my Lego spinner. These are the flyer and the bobbin. The flyer is what actually spins the wool, and it is on an axle that is powered by a Mindstorms motor. The bobbin rotates freely on that same axle. The bobbin is slowed down by a brake, which in this case is a blue elastic band that wraps around a tire that's attached to the bottom of the bobbin. When you release the tension on the yarn, the brake stops the bobbin and the flyer arm rotates the yarn onto it. As you spin, you put tension on the yarn when you want it to be twisted by the flyer and you release that tension when you want it to be wrapped onto the bobbin. I am very new at spinning and that's why I did this. I've been spinning on a supported spindle and I was curious to know how spinning wheels and other spinning devices work. And so I figured the best way to learn is to build one. And I've got Legos, I may as well. Once you're done spinning, it's pretty easy to get the yarn off the, the spinner. You just pull the bobbin right off. This device is called a Lazy Kate. It holds onto the yarn and allows the bobbins to spin freely while you do something else. Here I am putting that tire on the bottom of the bobbin to run that band around. I needed something round that would also spin on a Lego axle. And there are a few pieces that are both round and will spin on an axle. But all of the pieces that I found stopped spinning on that axle if you attached anything to them. And so that's why I'm using rubber bands. So you'll notice a blue handle on the flyer. And what that handle does is it determines at what height the yarn wraps onto the bobbin. So I can move that handle down the arm as I proceed to spin, and that um, allows the bobbin to get filled evenly. All right, so I am going to ply the two single strands of yarn that I made earlier. When you ply, you need to rotate the flyer in the opposite direction. So I spun this yarn clockwise and now I'm plying it counterclockwise. My yarn is very thick. It's just sort of barely fitting through all of my Lego openings. I programmed the Mindstorms to choose the direction based on which of the two buttons I pressed at first. So if I press button one, it rotates clockwise. And if I press button two first after starting up the program, like I just did there, it spins counterclockwise. Once you've selected the direction, you can increase that speed in that direction by continuing to repress the button that you pressed at first. And then you can slow it down as well. I never get up above about 50% speed on this. Um, I used some gearing and I really didn't need it. I could have just spun it directly off the motor. The bobbin got very, very full and in the end, all the yarn didn't quite fit on the bobbin. All right, this is my Lego Swift. And what the Swift does is it wraps the yarn in a skein, which is basically a big loop. At this point, I wanna thank the crew of Lego Coast Guard Helicopter 7738 for being there for my initial tests as my support and safety crew. And they've been with me through this whole project. Semper Paratus, guys. And I've got some adorable yarn, but it's only a little bit of yarn. This is, in fact, a toy. But it is 100% Lego. Uh, even the rubber bands came from Lego kits. I did, in the end, use pieces from a lot of different sets, but my very first working model was entirely Mindstorms. This has been Jessica Connor. Thanks for watching.